Has mine still been echoey this past one? Yeah, I think so. I think I, because I shut the door to this room, but I can't really leave it open at night because the kids' yeah. room is right next door. You're not willing to risk your kids' lives for the, uh... No, I'm not willing to wake him the fuck up room. after it took an hour to put him, put him to bed. Jesus yeah. Christ. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, Marcus. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm doing, uh, I'm doing great. You seem very subdued tonight. I would say uh, <laughs> something seems afoot. Afoot? Are you, are you, <clears throat> What's a, that's a good lo- way to put lo- it. I like you're that. a lonely single guy for a few days, right? Just tonight. Oh, I thought it was a couple of days. No, Michelle and the kids went to a retreat tonight, and I have Ted, and he has lamented that fact ever since Michelle left. <laughs> but now I get to be with you... Friday night in the mag room. All around the world you can hear them. Hey, hey, hey. Talking about using kind of funny stuff. Hey, hey, hey. Mag room. Mag room. The mag room. The mag room. Um, hey, I'm, so, trying to, uh, I'm trying to say it every time now. Oh yeah, we went early this time too. I you know, just get it out. Of, yeah. The, well, um, you, you had texted me while I was putting Ted to bed. I thought I was going to be ready at eight thirty. I wasn't. You're like, you wrote some that I deciphered and said, "Can we, we scoot for eight forty-five? I think that was German for "Can we shoot for eight forty-five? Yep, yep, yep. That's exactly what it means. <laughs> Yep. So I said yes, and then you wrote, you got in a, I should know why I'm laughing. I got, <laughs> I got in a really car bad car accident, but I think I could still make it by four, 8.45 is out. But I didn't understand that part, but. Oh, I thought I, no, I meant, eight, I meant, I think I could make it by 9, but, I, but 8.45 is out. Mm. It was a really bad car accident. I couldn't even see the screen on my phone, so it was hard to. I'm really sorry, there's blood and everywhere. Yeah, and then and then, fifteen minutes later, you were able to be at your shop and. I told you, I thought I could make it by nine, <laughs> that just was, not eight forty-five. <laughs> From a really bad. I get, in, I get in pretty hairy situations all the time. I can usually get myself out of things, in a fairly timely manner. Um, that is there any more to that story? No, or? I no no. Uh, I just mean like you know. You learn little tricks of the trade. With the, when the cops show up, you, you know. Oh, there's ways to hurry them along? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Grease their palms a little bit. Oh, you so know. you bribe them. Well, like, I got a podcast to record. Do you think we can get this? <laughs> Is there any way the investigation can continue a little later? By the end of it, are they giving you a police escort to well, the studio? Well, it's nice that some studio? of them, I like the, you know, the cops are fans. I get, I get people texting me a lot. <laughs> We're big in the Jupiter police. They like our style. Were you so, wearing um, the mask when you got in the accident so they knew yeah. who you were? Well, and, that, and they're saying that that's why I got in the accident. <laughs> it's not, but that's what the old lady's claim is. Do you like? Do you understand I'm El Scorpion Azul? <laughs> See? Oh, no. <laughs> See? Um, yeah, so, but I made it a little late, um, but I'm here. Yeah. I seems, was, with, uh, seems like with blood, you look, I mean, is it just the mask now hiding all your injuries or? Oh, it wasn't my blood. Oh, I see. I so hit. you, so you, is this like a hit and run situation? Like you killed <laughs> no, someone? No, and it, was then... a simple, it was a simple fender bender. It just was with a, um, one of those trucks that carries blood in it. <laughs> oh, a blood truck. A blood truck? Yeah. This sounds like a bad naked gun episode or something. <laughs> I was just talking about Leslie Nielsen last night. Isn't that weird? Did you ever see a movie called Prom Night by any chance? No. Have we ever talked about this before? I don't think so. Uh, I think it was from 1980. It's a a horror movie. Um, It's about Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen is the principal in the movie. Is it a funny movie? No, it's a horror movie. It's like a. 
I think people sort of made... like its campiness. Like, I think it's made a, re- a resurrection in the... Okay. 30 Does he years have a later. big role? He's the principal of a school where, like, these things happen commencing on prom night. Um... So does he just cancel the prom and that's the end of the movie? It's the end of the movie. It doesn't end that great. Yeah. So we're just going to move it to next Saturday. But he just plays a principal and there's no, he's a hundred percent straight man. There's nothing. Yeah. And it's, it's like off putting. You, you just expect him to be really funny. Cause the only way I ever knew him was a comedic actor, you know, I think. Yeah. Airplane and then naked guns. Yeah. And everything he said was hilarious. And you're watching this movie, you're like, when's the funny part going to happen? And it's Jamie Lee Curtis and, you know, uh, sort of a, yeah, a stock kind of horror story, I guess is what I would say. It's it's kind of fun. I think the Carpenters do the soundtrack. That makes it kind of the interesting in the 70s. Yeah, like Karen Carpenter and her, oh, wow. her bro. There's a lot of interesting people in that yeah. sentence that you've said. Yeah. I like to bring up... Um, pop culture not from (laughs) current from 1980 uh was that on get tv yeah one of them comet was probably on comet that way do they show it horror stuff edited or unedited Mm, i think edited because prom night was probably rated r right oh you mean was there naked stuff uh not only naked but it's a horror movie there's probably some murders yeah are we allowed to show murders on the Mag Room? Sure. No, on, uh, on the Get TV, on regular TV, do they show murders now? Usually it's just sex stuff, like you can't kiss, but you're allowed to murder people. You know who I was reading about, who I was wondering if you watched anything was? Was Carol Burnett. She, uh, the, what was I, just, I was just watching something. Was she ever on Magnum P.I.? <laughs> Any chance you could cross? <laughs> Any chance you could cross reference that? I think she was actually Magnum PI. Wasn't um, she mad? Didn't she have a mustache? Sh- there was an episode of Magnum PI on, uh, PI on the other night and he was it was him and he was kind of like Do you remember the the plot of that show? Season he, he lived 4 a, episode 14. It was so she had Rembrandt's been on girl. So I, Burnett I did, I portrayed just watched, Susan I, Johnson, the assistant branch yeah, manager at yep. the First Angelo Hawaiian Bank. Yep, 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 yep. That's the one I watched. Really good. Really good stuff. So I'm a big Carol Burnett. If anybody that goes, does a cameo on Magnum P.I., I'm a pro that person. Yes, love just Carol Burnett. Just because, like, you think that's not probably not the thing she's most known for, though. It's the thing I most knew her for, right? When you said it, I was like, was she on Magnum P.I. two nights ago? Remember that? <laughs> And then season eight she was in as well. Oh, I don't know which one. She returned in season eight, also as Susan Johnson, who had become a private investigator competing with Magnum. No, this was she was a. (laughs) That's a funny. (laughs) That's a funny callback. I used to work at the bank. Now I'm a private detective and I'm your competition. Yeah. Then they ended up working together. Yeah, they were a good on screen. Duo well, that would have been a tremendous like buddy cop movie. Matt, Tom Selleck and Carol Burnett in a buddy cop movie. Mustache and the Lady. Uh, <laughs> I like those. Uh, I like when in the 80s that the theme song of a movie would be a song that was written specifically for that movie. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They don't do, or maybe they do do that. I haven't seen it. Like movie Vacation. Yet. Yeah. And that was actually a really cool song. Yeah. Holiday Road. Yeah, that was great when they would make... They don't do that really anymore. They take good songs that are good. I sort they of like the cheesy... They don't commission Lindsey Buckingham to come up with one. Kenny Loggins should come back. Kenny Is Loggins? he dead? Running with your angels. Is Kenny Loggins uh, dead? I'm going to say no. My guess is no. Is He's either Burnett dead or he, or he died. No, that's why I was reading about her. She's 90. Okay. In wow. some new show. Kenny Loggins, 76. Nice. Dogger. He should, be, he should they, Somebody should hire him. He should have been in the new Top Gun movie. We're like Loggins and Messina, you and I. I'm Kenny Loggins, you're... <laughs> what was, what was Messina's name? Jim <laughs> Messina? Jim. Jim. What did he do? Eh. 
hung on to Kenny's coattails for Yeah, it's tough when the years. groups break up and then the one guy does nothing. I'm sure yeah. that's that's what's well, that's what's gonna happen to us, is that's that what you're coming. saying? That's what's coming, yeah. <laughs> one of these days. Hey, Mugen, can I really quickly promote Mugen uh, Cisco? <laughs> But no, can I just tell them the end of the Carol Burnett thing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So she was on, they had an article about her. She's on some new show, but it was interesting because they interviewed her saying, she was talking about comedy and how her comedy was supposed to be like friendly and funny. It wasn't like mean comedy, Mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. I was like, she's like, I just want to make people feel good. And I think there's places for both. I think sometimes, I mean, I know, you know, I like sarcasm and... Did the Wise interviewer push, push her down a flight of stairs or anything like that? After she said that? <laughs> yeah, and then she's dead. I'll show you mean-spirited, the old bag. 90, 90 years old. But yeah, I just, I, I don't really know her. I don't, I mean, I know she had her show. And she was on Magnum P.I. Tw- a couple of times. They said in her show she used to just take, <laughs> yes, not the other highlight of her career, Magnum P.I., <laughs> her guest <laughs> episodes. <laughs> she mentioned that as part of her canon. Um... Cannon, great work. Thank you. I guess I don't know enough of her show to really have an opinion of it. Yeah, it like, made me want to like check it out. I feel but like then, we were like she, one generation because that wasn't on. I mean, you could no. find it back when we were kids, I suppose, yeah. but it wasn't on the like the you know NBC whatever. I think it I ended. Know. I think it was the seventies. It like really ran yeah. in the seventies. But those but, old shows really are. I love the way they used to film things back then. Like it's you know nowadays it's too it's like hyper real almost you know, um, but yeah, those think old we could bring it back? shows. Uh, you and I, like or we just shoot, the, in the we movie shoot shows in old stuff. Well, and I don't know, but they just had a, the right feel to it. Like the cars yeah. looked like cars, and I don't know. Everything's become too homogenous in the world now. They, nothing has any like character. I feel like the seventies were where character started to sort of like fade away. I'm just making this theory up as I go. I've never I think thought you're, about no, this. No, I think you're right because I think people had to practice a lot before they got on the thing. Like, like they would, like Carol Burnett probably did a thousand shows before she had her TV, like a comedy shows. Because mm-hmm. you just went, you, you performed. Yeah. And now everybody just wants to be on Put on the YouTube thing. and... Or yeah. on TikTok and or, or shoot, make a podcast right away, without even practicing. Where the first ten episodes are terrible and they just do it can anyway. I, can we delete it? Can we delete it tonight, <laughs> live on the air? Would Carol Burnett have deleted her first performances? If they were allowed to, she probably didn't have the ease of just pressing a button that says erase. You know, <laughs> she actually didn't have to because they were just. She had to go like, just, she had to go like burn down a warehouse to get rid of. Yeah, the she burned down her original. That was in the interview. <laughs> she everything, said that. She yeah, everything, that? <laughs> everything was really kind of funny, and then she's like, "Yeah, and I burned it down. Three people died." And I really just, hated those first ten or twelve <laughs> shows we did. I just didn't ever want them. Like, if I could hide them from the public for the rest of my life. And the only thing that had to happen was a warehouse burns down, then I'm willing to do that. She's like, when I got famous, I bought the warehouse, kicked the people out, fired them, and burned it to the ground. Yeah. I kicked all the people out. I didn't do I was going to do it while they were just all in there. <laughs> but I, I let said, them no. leave. I gave them 10 I minutes. I do nice comedy. I'm not going to leave the people. I'm not going <laughs> to lock the doors and burn the people alive inside. I'm a nice comedian. So you wanted to plug something. Sorry. I just, somebody gave me tequila this week. Um, it's a, there's a guy out here in my neighborhood that makes his own tequila and he comes to my store all the time. And I like Oh, the it. guy that makes it. He gave it to me? Yeah. So he gave me a bottle this week. Uh, it's called Tequila, <clears throat> Tequila Scenario. Like okay. Tequila Scenario, but. Sorry. So the tequila is good? Yeah. It's weird. It does not. Okay. Give a, me I, some... don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to. I shouldn't have said the word weird. It's. I'd say, <laughs> it honestly doesn't taste like any other tequila I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> nice. So, so what does it taste like? It just doesn't taste like any other tequila. And so I text him. Well, that's right, good. Uh, right before I uh, went on, I said it's got, it doesn't taste like any tequila I've ever tasted before. I can't figure out what I mean by that though. And he said we age it. In, uh, oh, this could be great. What would what would be the most <laughs> weird thing to age it in? 
We age it in old diapers. That makes <laughs> it yeah. its, gives it its thing. Garbage cans from outside New York hospitals. They, uh, they age it in Jack Daniels <laughs> barrels. Okay. So it's got. I, I don't know if I, I was gonna because I said I don't know what that what the difference is, but it's really. Do barrels keep some of the stuff? So when you have Jack Daniels barrels, it's got a little Jack in there. I guess it's got some of the notes or something. I in don't the know. barrel, because the wood. The old barrel, yeah, the old barrel. The lit, the one I went to around here that made it didn't make it tequila because it can't call it tequila. It was an agave spirit. That was that one I gave you. They said they yep. aged it in something interesting as well. I don't remember because we did the tour and basically. The tour was awesome. My guy, I went with my friend who's a like a science teacher and he was asking all these questions and the guy loved it. And then at the end he did a tasting and I think the guy would have let us like get totally <laughs> hammered. It was the owner <laughs> and he was just like, what else do you want to taste? And I was like, dude, I got to drive us back. What kind, of, what kind of science questions was he asking? Like how they did do it. Do you have any like, Bunsen burners back here? No, because no, he likes to brew beer. Is that an so. Erlenmeyer flask? <laughs> yes. Or a, yes. Uh, He's dropping a lot of knowledge. <laughs> I like how that was your two. That would have been my two. I on already that. ran out of. I already ran Buds out of cool Bernie science. Buds and Bernie Wire Play. That was like all we had back in the day. Yeah. Would it be great though, if that flash. was how you made tequila? Bunsen burners and Erlenmeyer flasks? <laughs> he's like, exactly. He's like, that's actually the two yeah, things he, we need. He gives you a look like, how the f*** did you know that? You must be from, this, from the You've 80s. You've made tequila with an Erlenmeyer fr- flask before? <laughs> You're one of us. Who is Erlen Meyer, by the way? He was uh, very. He was shaped <laughs> like this. He was broad in the shoulders, and he kind of came down, and then he then he went back out, and his and his calves and his feet were like just as wide as his shoulders were. Emil Erlen Meyer. Mm-hmm. It's Gold. Richard August Carl Emil Erlen Meyer. That's a yeah. long name. His parents were like, "Can we please put one more middle name here?" Like, he was related we to John Jacob Jingleheimer. <laughs> <laughs> they were next door neighbors. <laughs> yep. They're like, F- "I got both of them in the same class." The mailman, the mailman hated driving down that street. Do they mention anything? Oh, in 1860, he published a description of the conical flask that bears his name. That's just like a footnote. That's like the thing he should be most famous for. He didn't invent the flask. No, he just published a description of it. He also formulated Erlenmeyer's rule. Think he was loaded? You think he had tons of dough at the end of his life? <laughs> I don't know. A type of oh, the Erlenmeyer flask, a type of specialized flask, ubiquitous in chemistry laboratories. And tequila farms, or tequila. <laughs> is now used whatever's. to make certain tequilas. The Erlenmeyer rule does not have a link to check, so it must be not a great rule. Yeah, don't, don't, don't <laughs> do too much follow-up on this. Maybe it was like... Erlenmeyer liked to cover his tracks. You a... should always use the Erlenmeyer flask. <laughs> that is the Erlenmeyer rule. You know, no matter what, Dr. Erlenmeyer? <laughs> always? Yes, you must buy 12 of them from me right now. <laughs> <That's>... Okay. <laughs> um, what are you drinking? Tequila. So anyway, yeah. just people go buy. Tra- oh, he, I don't know where you can find tequila scenario, but if you ever see a bottle of uh, tequila, can you like order it cool online? Picture this dude's way into horses. That's how he's a big horse guy. I don't know if you can see it, but the the yeah, you can order it online. That's right. Yeah, it comes up on the link. Yeah. Tequila scenario. Wow, it's just yeah, I like big, it, dude. A big horse just comes up when you click. It is a good flavor, though. It's, I don't know. It's just different. Like, it's different, and it, like, starts off, you kind of think it's not going to be smooth, and then it is smooth. It's weird. It's, like, earthy and sort of, like, foody. It almost tastes like you're eating something when you drink it. It's interesting. They show the tasting room with a horse serving the tequila. Do you think yeah. they do that at the... A horse brought it to me. <laughs> <laughs> it says, customized tequila tastings with horse meat and greet, as well as horse, horse performance... Meat? Oh, horse meat with two E's, not <laughs> two E-A. E-A. <laughs> horse meat, yes. We love horses. Do you, would you like to eat some? <laughs> Have you had a horse burger yet? Mmm, uh, horse uh, burger. With some marshmallow fluff. <laughs> His horses are, are beautiful <laughs> animals. As man. well as horse performance to music. Is there a picture of him next to a really tall horse? I don't know. I, I think Anywhere? this is that picture of the tasting room. Is like him and his wife, maybe? Is she a blonde girl? 
Yeah, the Lady Jean Ranch. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Why don't we? Why don't we? That's that's like I could hit a golf ball from my the old Bagroom Studios here to Lady Jean Ranch. Why didn't we go there and taste some tequila when we visited? I can't bring you Philistines in there with me. The he doesn't sophisticated like, he doesn't like northerners. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely not sophisticated. I, however, am. I'm you know, like a tweener. My, uh, I'm not unsophisticated, but I'm not sophisticated. It's like the weird place to be. My, um, my overalls and my luchador mask belie my sophistication. Do a lot of tastings. Uh, accompany people places. I don't know I what that to, means. You like know. You're, you're an escort? Well, no, yes, but not in the sexual term. Like, I see. You know. Well, not escorts don't always have to be sexual. No, they usually end up being that way, but not always. People pay you to escort them? No, they don't. I'm just saying. I'm, I do sophisticated things. Like, oh. Usually the escorts in movies escorting? end up dead. No, you're thinking of like Cato Kalin or something. I'm like I a see. general. I'm Kato Kalin was an escort? Well, wasn't he just kind of like a guy that hung out with them? And, and I don't think he ended up dead. I think he was in the trial, right? Why do you have to ask so many questions? Why can't you just... <laughs> Roll with the punches. Be my, be the Jack Daniels barrel to my new tequila. Yes, exactly. You just soaked me up. Dead. I can't believe it. There we go. Are we what, supposed what, to be somewhat factual or at least pretending? What was the story? Kato <laughs> Kalen is an escort. I don't know. I was just saying things. Yeah, you said, I had three. I've had I said, three shots of tequila and a beer and some iced tea. I'm all over the place. And you're right in a now, car, Jared. bloody car and accident. I'm in a bloody car accident. <laughs> I'm not meant to make sense that. I'm just trying to get some reactions. That's all. What uh, what would you say? So here's the thing. Something when we were younger that wasn't um, that Green wasn't Day. that wasn't cool. Uh, Green Day. People liked Green Day when we were younger. They weren't cool. But now some people use, and I just bought one of these things <clears throat> because I was tired. Disc man. Of putting things in my pockets. Oh, a uh, fanny pack. Yeah. Yeah. It's Everybody pretty awesome. Fanny ba- Everybody knows that fanny packs are back. That's like a year and a half old news. They're really back, though? Yes. People, like, legitimately think fanny packs are cool now. You're, really? You're, you're late to the party. I felt like I was making a huge step in my life. I've already because gone back it, to think of there for only for gay people. But wasn't there a period in our life where we made fun of people with fanny packs? Yeah. It's one of those things, you know. It seems you know, like, trem- it's like rollerblading. It seems why did rollerblading? Though. Why did rollerblading get such a bad rap for like twenty years? People just I don't know. It's because all the stuff. So- I think rollerblading was all the stuff you had to wear. Like you just looked weird with them when people wore like the knee pads, the elbow pads. The- but don't you wear the same things when you roller skate or no? I don't think so. I don't. Th- no. I think you just. Nah, I mean, my kids. If everybody's like safety, safety, and I'm all for the helmet. Like, if you smash your head, like brain that's- damage. That seems big. But yeah, like wear a mask. <laughs> but the elbows and knees, like you break your arm, you'll be you that will heal. Like I'm I'm not gonna need you to like you don't need to wear like a shield or a iron suit to go. Oh, that would be cool. An iron suit out to school and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> to you go rollerblading? Or bullied at all. <laughs> well you wouldn't they turn around. They'd punch you and it'd get hurt. It would hurt when you fell on your iron suit. Yeah. That's true. You, if you fell down, it'd be like that scene in um, the Christmas story where the snow suit kid went, oh, yeah, small yeah. falls. You'd be like Can't that. You wouldn't be able to get up. Yeah. But no one would be able to kick you because you have an iron suit on. They'd hurt their foot. Yeah. Hopefully it would cover your mouth. I'd hate to get kicked in the mouth. But yeah, so I'm making that move. I'm now a fanny pack owner, and I'm excited about it. I put my wallet in. I'm like, every time I go somewhere where I need my wallet, I'm just going to wear... The pack, I think, I think I'm going to wear it across my chest. Yeah, that's not cool. Just do the fanny pack. Just go with it. Put not it around going the, low. Instead of putting it in the front, instead of putting it in the front, put it in the back. I think, I think it's going to be cool. like, in the back is cooler? Cooler than in the front. You look like a douchebag. Yeah, but what about across I, I my chest? What about cool? in my front where I could just unzip it, I take out my wallet. Well, beep. if it's the right kind of thing, I, I have to say, that's what I carry my little recorder around with. But so you have a fanny it, pack already? I have a shoulder bag. I've got what I call a shoulder bag. It's a fanny pack. It crosses my... No, it's not a fanny pack. Same thing. 
It's for if it's a fur fanny pack for a man who weighs 1,100 pounds, because <laughs> it goes all the way from here to there. I swear to God, I looked up because you know I like to do research when I buy stuff. There are fanny packs ranging in size from what I got that fits like a phone and like what you would think you'd buy a fanny pack to, to like you can fit like a laptop in it. That doesn't seem like a fanny pack anymore. It seems dumb. Like, why not just get a backpack at that yeah. point? I like a good backpack, too. Yeah, but that's like, it seems dumb. Anything bigger than, I think your phone should fit in it, like a wallet, your key, like whatever would fit in your pockets. Shouldn't it just be a... The... It's like a purse. But you don't want like, your laptop in your purse. You mean it's a fanny pack that holds your computer in front of your, let's say, like, almost yeah. like a, it's covering your penis area? Yeah, I was looking at the... So like, they're there's, huge. There's Reddit questions about, I want to get a fanny pack that fits like an iPad or my small laptop. And I'm like, are uh, you stupid? Being, that, yeah, that's just, yeah, exactly. This it's is not a done. lot. I mean, just next time I visit you... Or, I'm going to put all my stuff in this fanny pack. It's going to be my whole, what I pack. Try overalls, man. These are great. Pockets are do. big. You got pockets at the back. You got do you wear overalls a lot? Uh, all the time. I mean, I've never no, seen No, I, I have you, a new, so. I, 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 I'm going to try to disguise myself as much as I possibly can when I'm on camera. That's my new strategy here. So I've so never gonna really wear, worn. So you're going to wear things that you never wear? Right. So if so you saw me they, in public, you wouldn't know that. It, so that I can t always deny, plausible deniability. I know I sound like the guy, but look, he's wearing fucking overalls and a luchador mask. I'm in a black t-shirt and... But now that you've told everyone pants. that, doesn't that mean like when people well, I'll just see delete you, that part of the show out. They'll say, wait, that was between this you guy has no overalls and no mask. That must be Mark. Yeah. And, and his name's it. Mark. <laughs> so he must be... You might want to do a different name too. El Scorpio and Asul. I mean, we've done 112 episodes with you using your actual name, which could be tough for you to, like, Ladies deny. and gentlemen, <laughs> I just want to, I don't know. When we started this whole crazy thing, I was <laughs> nervous about blah, blah, blah. And so I, I used a fake name. My name isn't really Mark. I'm just going to go by El, El Scorpio and Asul from now on. Is that what I have to call you, or can I still Por call favor. you Mark? Por favor. Por <laughs> favor. El Scorpio and Asul. All right. Would Scorpio and Azul wear a fanny pack? No, because I got um, overalls? suspenders on. Yeah, overalls. What do, you, do overalls have a lot of pockets? You got a pocket on your chest. This one, These actually have two pockets on your chest. And then there's pockets on the side, pockets on the butt. So, yeah. You have, I mean, it's, and the, and the, and the, and the waist or the uh, hip pockets are very deep. And, oh, that's nice. Like, these are perfect. I, I, I wish I didn't look like kind of a <laughs> dork wearing them. Like, if they looked cool. Like a little bit like a hillbilly? Yeah, but I think there are some people that pull that look. I used to, I used to I know a guy. you got to do it with no shirt. Yeah. Then you'd be holding I have off. to maintain a little bit of dignity, Jared. <laughs> The little. I just want, I want like a pocket full. I want these pocket pockets full to be dignity? full of dignity. That was an old uh, Spin Doctor song. They were great. <laughs> I don't love back pockets. I don't think I ever put anything in my back pocket. I'll put things in my back pocket just while I'm walking. And then when I get to my car, I like take my wallet out of my back pocket. And I, I'm not going to tell everybody. I shouldn't tell everybody my name. <laughs> And I'm not going to tell you where I put my wallet. I put it in my secret wallet spot. I put. I have two yeah, you different... You just put it in your car or something, right? Right. Or do you, or do you have some place exactly that people where. can just grab it? You're like, yeah, I put it on my hood or something. And you just drive around and hope it doesn't fall off? <laughs> no. I'm just saying, if somebody were to break in my car, no. no While hey, you I were know, there, they would know the where you are. he isn't? said he keeps it in his right in the inside door of his car. They try to right find you like... Hey, Mark, can you just give me a ride to the store? It's great to see you. And then while you're driving them, they're just grabbing your wallet out of your secret <laughs> wallet spot. See you, sucker. <laughs> Idiot. Can't believe you just told me. Fool me, me once. <laughs> fool me once, Steve. Shame on me. You. you told me your secret wallet spot. I can't believe it. Like this week, this week my my family's all been at work or school. It's been super weird. Oh, it's the best. I used to, to be home by myself. So I mean, it's great. been fine. 
But you've been watching I, any Magnum PI? I get out of practice and then I see people in real life and I'm like, wow, do I still know how to talk to people? I don't know. You want to do it? You want to let's let's start role playing every once a little. Yeah, bit you know more. what I need role playing of of being social, not fake, because that's not the right word, but doing the like, you just like just fun, just being fun, like what I do with you for my entire life. <laughs> I'm what, just how do you, kidding. How do you? Describe All right, so we want to just have a, a me and you conversation, but you don't know me. Let's see if we can make this happen. All right, now I don't know you. Hey, hey, partner, what's going on? <laughs> like, what would, what would I even say if I walked up to you? I'd be like, hey, that, that mask is cool. I like wrestling. Is that Thank a wrestling you. mask? Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is called luchador wrestling. It's a Mexican-style wrestling that I don't really know that much about. I actually don't wear the mask because I'm a wrestler. I wear it for a different reason. Why Why do you wear it? Well, you're a stranger. I don't like to talk to strangers about that kind of thing right <laughs> off the bat. You'd have to get me be- You'd have to get to know me better as a person. I fucked so let's up see already. You- let's see you exercise some of those social skills of yours. See if you can talk <laughs> me out of my mask secret. He'll talk you out of more than that, I'm sure. Hey, there's a motel right down the road. You and I are strangers. This type of thing happens from time to time. So you don't want to tell me about a horror, your mask. I was watching a horror porno movie just the other day. <laughs> Something like this happened. What, well, I'm sorry, I cut you off. What were you saying? No, I, you should just talk about yourself. That's what I've heard people like to do. Oh, oh, this is us socializing, right? Right. Hey, uh, my name's uh, <laughs> my name's Phoenix. How you doing? Phoenix, that's cool. I've I've met a few Phoenixes in my life. Where'd you get your name from? Um, my mother was not supposed to have me. Uh, she actually died before she gave birth to me, and I rose from her womb like a phoenix. But then she didn't name you. I, like, uh, so who named you? Then? The hospital. And the hospital was in Phoenix, Arizona, too, so it made it real easy. Well, that's... Like, two two things just point to this name. Why don't we just go in my... That's my a last lot, name. That's a lot my of last coincidences. Tucson. Yeah, I know. I know. Phoenix Tucson? They even yeah. changed your last... Didn't your mom have a last name? Tucson, yeah. yeah. That was their last name. Yeah, the name lives on. Yeah, me and my... <laughs> my daddy. My, I still got my daddy. We just oh, went why out didn't, to birthday why didn't dinner your, for... Why didn't your dad name you, then? Uh, who did I say named me? The, the hospital. Because uh, my daddy was at work that night. He uh, and they couldn't wait for him. Um, well, there's sometimes there's like deadlines with paperwork and stuff like that. He I was. Didn't uh, there was a, I didn't know there was a name deadline for. Yeah, well, it's because it's got to be. You got to be named the same day that you're <clears throat> born. You ever heard that law before? No, I have not. That's some interesting. It's a. It might be an Arizona thing too. Now I that see. I think in about Arizona, it. that has to happen. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting. So he was working for the next twenty-four hours, and he, he get was there to name the, you. He does. He did a seventy-two <laughs> on, seventy-two off shift. And they wouldn't even let him go to the hospital for his wife's <laughs> death have, and the birth of the child. They would have probably, but they didn't have cell phones back then. And he was he was working in a mine. He was way down wow. underneath the earth. He must have been devastated when he came out and his kid was already named and his wife was dead. Well, the thing is, he never told um, anybody this, but he wanted to name me Phoenix anyway. <laughs> wow! Because <laughs> he was he, a big River Phoenix fan. Why did he not tell anyone? That and, seems and like Joaquin a really Phoenix. That seems like a really good thing <laughs> to tell people. Because uh, he was a deaf mute, and he didn't when he spoke, it was hard to understand him. <laughs> okay. So he just thought those things. So he did tell someone, but they just didn't understand it. Well, he was just shy. He didn't like to talk because he said he thought he sounded weird. So he just he just wrote things down, but not until after. <laughs> Mom but he and didn't died. write that down. <laughs> I can't. Remember the timeline to every story he ever told me. There's a lot going on uh, in my family tree. No, yeah, but you just but, said, wouldn't he just write that story down? Well, Seems like a cool story. I think we, we would really get. We're doing it. Well, this is a fun conversation between two strangers. I think you're a really great conversationalist. You sure you don't want to just wrap this one up here? <laughs> Have you ever heard of Paul Alexander? Jason Alexander's brother, yes. Very good actor. 
I don't know. No, uh, Paul Alexander. Sounds like right. um. A so there's a man designer. who just died. But he has it's... two first names, and I generally don't like that. At age 78. Okay. But so here's his story. In 1952, he contact contracted. Sorry, contact contracted polio. He contacted the, polio. He said, hey, polio. Hey, what excuse you doing? me. <laughs> excuse me, polio. Would you like to come in my body? And at age oh. six, he was paralyzed from the neck down. Wow. After being hospitalized, he woke up and found himself inside of an iron lung, which is a respirator that that works a person's diaphragm. It's also a song by Jethro Tull. So the they have just these pictures. Of, electric flute. It's like all these huge iron, like basically your whole body's in this thing and your head just sticks out of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I've seen them. Have you ever heard the song? I think so. As if they play the flute. Yeah. I remember really my good. dad always thought it was great that they were a flute and I was like, <laughs> I don't think the flute is that. And I don't think I've turned, like some of the bands that he liked, I think I didn't like because I was just trying to be Paid in the ass. Yeah, but some of them have turned on, like I've turned on to them. And you I've, never got into the electric flute? The Tull has not been one. Tall, like ZZ Top, those ones have not. So he, so think, so I think that's you, right? Like, think of like how grateful should we be, right? That's not our situation. That I don't have polio and an iron lung? Yeah. I don't know. People would just be taking care of me all day long. I could go for that. <laughs> what is polio? I know this is a dumb, fu- I, I sound like an idiot. But what does polio do to you? I think it paralyzes you, right? Well, you're only saying that because you just read the thing that said he was paralyzed. Yeah, but like FDR had polio as well, and then he couldn't, he had a wheelchair. Yeah, but like, what's a, what's a good description of the disease? I mean, it's I can be look something it up. More than... I'm not a doctor. You can pretend you're one. Polio mainly affects children under five years of age. Uh-oh. One in 200 infections lead to irreversible paralysis. Among those that those paralyzed, five to ten percent die when their breathing muscles become immobile. So he graduated from high school in Dallas at the age of 21. Was he on the basketball team or anything? <laughs> the first person to dunk from an iron lung. It was pretty, <laughs> it's pretty great. That would be awesome. No, he this did guy not. Is ex- cool. He did not attend class. He graduated without attending class. And was later bold. accepted into UT Aussie. I think the other kids were pissed that he didn't have to go to class. Said he studied, he got a law degree, and he became a lawyer and a published author. And when he became, eventually he learned how he could breathe on his own for small amounts of time. So he was able to like go in his wheelchair to court. And then when he got old, he had to go back in the iron lung. And then he caught COVID and he died. But I just thought it was amazing that like, I don't know. I feel. I mean, I guess if you if you have something happen to you young, is it like better? Like if that happened to you when you were in college? Yeah, put me in the you, iron lung. You probably wouldn't have been too happy. Yeah. I mean, would you guys have wheeled me around to the parties and stuff? <laughs> yeah, chicks do dig the iron lung. Um, it would have been great if you like you got laid more in an iron lung than you actually did otherwise. Yeah. You know what else is iron? My. <laughs> A big nine-inch iron for you. You just crawl in the iron, in the lung, iron yeah. lung with you. Now you gotta keep your head out of the top because you're gonna you you'll suffocate if you stay in there for too long. Yeah, maybe they like that asphyxiation, isn't that a yeah. thing? There's one part of me that's not paralyzed, and you can probably see it right. <laughs> you look right here. <clears throat> yeah, so as long as you guys would take me. Remember, we used to go to the mall sometimes, walk around. If I was in an iron lung, would you guys have let me smoke cigarettes? Would you guys go out and buy cigarettes for me? No. We would not. Um, yeah, so I just thought it was a good feel-good story. What was his name? Paul Alexander. Yeah. Is there a clothing designer named Alexander Paul? I think when I was in high school, I used to wear ties that said Alexander Paul on them. You know, it was only to wear they were like a, in iron lungs, though. Do you wear clothes in an iron lung, or you go naked? Paul Alexander is a clothing brand. I was right. Yeah, it was him. It was him. <clears throat> he made beautiful iron lung uh, yeah. conscious fashion lines. 
I wonder if you, but like I said, I, would you wear clothes in the iron lung? I would wear, I might wear something like this, something practical. But if I was a lot going of, out. Lot of pockets to store all your yeah, stuff. Yeah. I don't like a fatty pack when beside my iron lung. You can't move, so. But if we were going, it's like you guys were taking me out for a night on the town, going out to Freddie B's, see a band or something like that. Yeah. Uh, what would I wear? I mean, I've oh, always I kind like of been into the Alexander. athleisure. I've always been into like the athleisure type of stuff. But you're gonna so wear that like, to the bar. Yeah, I do. In well, your maybe, iron lung? Yeah, like a cool pair of like Kooji sweatpants. You gotta wear o- some flashy. Over my iron lung. Am I totally contained inside of the iron lung? Do you guys just have to wheel me around, or do I get to move, use my feet? I mean, iron no, is a heavy you can't, thing. You can't move. So I'm just, just stationary. Yeah, just your head is out. So of you guys the lung. literally have to move me, or you have to put me on like a dolly to get me to the. Well, it's on a cart to the, the iron lung party. cart. We kind of bedazzle up the cart a little bit, and we'd wheel you around. And you guys let me put on cool outfits inside. I mean, I guess we have to put them on you, which is kind of awkward. But I yeah. would do that. I would do that for you. Thank you. I'm not getting you cigarettes, but I'll get you. Uh, well, Ross will do that. <laughs> we also have to like put them to your mouth as well. I can't move anything. It seems like a bad idea when you have a lung issue to smoke cigarettes. Yeah, but I'm already in an iron lung. Is it gonna get worse? Okay, that seems like it could. Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Let me like just ask my doctor. Is my like, doctor around? <laughs> yeah, want, to think, do an, want to do another improv? I think he would say no. Uh, um, so what do you guys, so what hey, do we this do? Is, this is Jimmy Tucson, your doctor. You don't call yourself Dr. Jimmy Tucson? You just go by, <laughs> I like how non-pretentious you are. I'm going to take your advice. <laughs> what was the advice? <laughs> that I should yeah, my, should my mom have. died and it was in the town of Jimmy, Arizona. So name me Jimmy. Interesting. That's how I got my name, too. Tucson. Interesting. I mean. Yeah. And my voice has changed. Now you're just iron more lung. Rep. You've taken on my old voice, and I've taken on yours. Must be this Iron Lung thing I'm in. Yeah. Straightens me out a little I wrote bit. that song, Iron Lung. Oh, the t- Jethro Tall one? Yes. We were just talking about that. Me and my friend were just saying it's really not that great of a song. <laughs> well, I, my you know? first version didn't have the flute in it. They kind of ruined it. Was it still about um, polio? Why did yes. you write a song about polio? <laughs> it was it was an anthem to polio. <laughs> was, I missed it. Did Jonas Salk like that song? Do you know? He, he did. Really? That was his oh, favorite. Well, it was on his Spotify more. playlist. Really? <laughs> Salk's hits. Salk's uh, Summer of Salk. <laughs> summer of Salk. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. All, all it was Iron Lung and the uh, Metallica song One. It was all about those those kind of songs. Like, like infirm people. Yes, it was his favorite tunes. That's cool. Yep. Makes sense too. It's he like wasn't exactly that much fun at a party, but no, no. But nobody expected him to be. No. Nope. He was always just sulking in the corner. Sulking. That's where it came from. Yeah, he invented two things. The polio vaccine and sulking. <laughs> that would be tough. Didn't he just give away the vaccine, too? Yeah, at a fair. That's tremendous. I yeah, wonder if he, he was uh, like, I wonder if he was worried it didn't work, and he's just like, hey, you guys can have it. Yeah, uh, just take it. Don't. I'm not <laughs> liable for this, you know? I think it's good, but who the f- you know, who am I? All I did was invent the act of kind of acting depressed, you know? <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather be known for that. It seems like more of a moneymaker. <laughs> Being known for sulking. I mean, polio is probably on its way out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> for a while, do you know they thought polio might have been caused by ice cream? No. Cause I've people, never kid, heard that. Kids got it more in the summer for some reason. And that's when people ate more ice cream. So they oh, did funny. they did the stats and they thought for a while they were like gonna ban ice cream. What's your second sisk story? You wanna hear that one too? Heck yeah. Basically it was about you know how politics suck now? Yeah. I mean maybe they always did, but this was a story about Jimmy Carter. He went to his farm. Peanut farm, right? April 
yeah, Plains, Georgia, April 20, 1979. He's just about close to losing the presidency. He was relaxing on a boat in a pond when he was when he was attacked by a swamp rabbit. Mm-hmm. It was hissing menacingly, its teeth flashing and its nostrils flared. And Jimmy Carter had to beat it away with a paddle. Are you sure we haven't talked about this on the show before? Really? I'm almost, well, my life has started to just sort of become one <laughs> giant pile of dirty laundry. Like, everything sort of looks the same to me. It's bent onto itself? Yeah. But I feel like we've spoken about this before. Maybe I just read the story unrelated to the show. I'm sure you time. read things when we're not talking to each other, so that's possible. Yeah. My, my, my desire to learn and interact pretty much stops and starts with you, Jared. <laughs> it's better that way because then you think my stories are interesting. Okay, so, um, yes, I, I just, have heard it was like It was before. a big story of like him killing a, he like saved himself from a killer rabbit. Yeah. And I was just like, I thought that would be great if there was some sort of story like that for a week or so. About Joe Biden or Trump or whoever the f*** is the president. Dan Rather. Remember when Have Dan it. Rather got attacked by that guy in the park? And that, that's where that song... Yeah. Dan Rather got attacked by a guy, like, in Central Park. And um, the guy was beating him up and screaming, What's the Frequency, Kenneth? Oh, that's and the that's, R.E.M. song. That's where the name of that song came from. Yeah. And what did Dan Rather say? What's the fre- uh, My name's not Kenneth. 8.80 a.m. But I'll tell you this much. Listen to 98.7 The Gator. <laughs> Monday through Friday, or Saturday mornings, they got a fella named... Rather had a contract to put to yeah. do some station, so he, he used got the it. shit kicked out of him, but he made $100,000 that night. <laughs> that one's Think not as cool, like, attacked by a crazy person? I'm uh, saying if, like... I want to say Joe Biden gets chased by a squirrel at, at the White House or something, or... My ex-wife claims to have been chased in a serial, scary manner by a squirrel. She said she was sitting somewhere once, and a squirrel just eyed her up, and it, like, came towards her, came towards her, came towards her, and then she eventually got scared of it and started walking away, and it just kept following her and following her and following her. It's not. It's one of those stories that people tell you that I... It's not why we got divorced or anything, but and I to just To this don't, day, it's still following her? I don't... Well, that's what I said. I'm like, it's a squirrel. Maybe... It's not going to follow you around. That doesn't make any sense. And she didn't like that I didn't believe her. <laughs> so I hit her. And then we got divorced. Oh, you didn't hit Went her. Went through a little bit of depression, and then I ended up starting a podcast with you. <laughs> That's a good yada, yada, yada. Here we are. That is um, great. I don't know how I would respond if Michelle... Like, I could see the first part. Like, there was a squirrel that moved toward me. I got a little freaked out, and I left. But, like, she said it followed her more? She said she that's why she ended up moving to North Carolina. When I, where I met her, <laughs> she's from New Jersey, but she moved to North Carolina. Well, I met her in Charlotte, remember? She's like, I had to get away from that squirrel. <laughs> it's a squirrel just <laughs> every morning I would wake up, and I'm like, are you sure it was the same squirrel? Because there's, like, millions of squirrels out there. If you really wanted been... someone to move, though, that would be a great way to do it. <clears throat> is, that, is that that same squirrel from last night? <laughs> On the windowsill. I saw it at the bar too. It, had, it was gray and it had a poofy tail. Don't you remember? What would you have to do to make the squirrel look different? Like you give it like a streak or haircut. something? Cool haircut. <laughs> what is a cool squirrel haircut? <laughs> <laughs> like uh like the um the the Rachel, like from the oh, um, I see. friends. Like a like a nice bob or something. Like layers. You want layers down the back and feathered bangs in the front. It's like that f- Squirrel has great hair, but it freaks me Why out. Why does it keep following me around? It's like hair is so nice, though. It is a cool looking squirrel. What are we at? We're at an hour and a half already. Yeah, we went a long time. Should we just keep going? I don't Take know. An hour got, long special episode? I got nothing to do. But no, we got the new thing now. You're going to publish what's good. I don't even care about the length anymore. Oh, okay. Remember we said that? I do, but I didn't what? do it that time. I still cut it down to 34 minutes. Really? Jesus Christ. I don't know. Just uh, whatever. Sometimes good. In, the, in the heat of the moment. Yeah, well, sometimes I think it's good now, and then when I go back. Yeah, but I, if you don't think it's good, don't do it. But don't 
But don't cut anything that you think is good. That's what I'm saying. All right. Let's um, keep going. Yeah, I saw Roadhouse. 112th episode spectacular. Road oh, yeah, you said this you is 113, actually. So you never saw Roadhouse before? You never. I've this never week. seen the movie. How come? Just never I don't came know. up? Never, never it's saw it It's not a TV. movie that I... Like, I like those kind but of haven't movies. Haven't you heard enough about it that you yes. would have sought it out or something? I guess it's pro- you're probably pretty much in the middle there. Like, I bet a lot of people have heard about Roadhouse. But, I mean, it's not like everybody was like, when it was in the theaters, let's go see Roadhouse. Like, I don't even remember when it was in the theaters. It got, it got a life for me, like, after college. Well, it was on TV a lot, but I would bet it was terrible on TV. Like, it's so nuts. much probably got cut off, cut out. You know, it's ter- I mean, it's terrible to begin with. Like It was not. I did not think it was terrible. I know it's not a good movie, like a, but I was entertained. I was ready. I sat down. I'm on vacation. It was one night. Michelle had stuff to do. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to throw it on. It was 9 o'clock. And usually, like, if, if it sucks at 10, I'm like, I'll just go to bed. And I watched the whole movie. Watched the whole movie. I would do that. It is entertaining. It's just... It's the type of entertaining that you know. It's like eating a Snickers bar. It's the type yes. of entertaining, that, yeah. But there was a fight every five minutes. <laughs> Poorly choreographed. I loved all the little tropes in that movie. Yeah. Like, how many <clears throat> have you ever been in a? Have you ever once in your life seen a situation where people had knives stashed in their shoes? Well, it made me think about like where it was probably better when not everyone could just get guns because there was a lot more fighting. Like people would have just shot them each yeah, other. Yeah, but you don't. You, I mean, no, that. There was. That's not. That bar had a fight in it, like every eight minutes. There, there's no yeah, bars that are really better. like that. No, <laughs> you have you ever been to a roadhouse? Yeah. No, you haven't. Of course, I've been to a roadhouse. Haven't you yeah. been to a roadhouse? Then, and, and how about a roadhouse with that good of a band? Yeah, they perform in a steel cage. Jeff Healy was great. Did they do Angel Eyes in that movie? He did not. It's one of the few Jeff Healy songs I know. It's okay. But he jammed the whole movie. Pretty interesting guy. Blind, but uh. Yeah. He was also in an iron lung for a while. People don't know that about him. No, he didn't know that. His parents were very anti-vax people, so he Anti- didn't get the vaccine. He yeah. was one of the few thousand lung, people. Then blind, but then he traded. They said we can get you out of this iron lung, but you're going to be blind. Yeah. So he got he out. Said I'll do it. Um, yeah, again, I was just thoroughly entertained, and it continues to fit, because somebody in our text string said, go watch them, or you're going to watch the remake now. I hate remakes of movies that people already like. It's dumb. If people like the movie, don't make the movie again. It seems ridiculous. Yeah, so that, and you know what other show I've been watching? Which is not anywhere near, I'm like doing the Mark thing now. Rockford Files? Where I, no, 30 Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever watch 30 Rock? I did. I like it. I never had seen it. I think it was, I think I thought it was overrated because of Tina Fey <coughs> was like overrated or whatever. She was like, I like push, her. She I was pushed see, really hard. Much, though. She was. She was overexposed. That's what happens. That's that's they fuck everybody. Hollywood fucks everybody. We're gonna get fucked by him too, Jared. It's just... But that's why I didn't watch it, because she got overexposed. Yeah. But now I'm watching it and I really enjoy it. Oh, it's I, awesome. That's a great And Alec show. Baldwin's I've never seen some like it's like totally new and It's real she's funny. funny and everybody, everybody in the supporting cast is funny. It's a yeah. it's a specific kind of funny. Yes. But uh if you like like that, like it's the it's not it's like sarcastic. It's smart. Right? It's quick. It's like yeah. punny a little bit. Um, yeah, it's good. But they, uh, I love all the that Jack McBrayer. I don't know what I forget what his name is on the show, but the guy who plays the NBC page, the uh, real happy Kenneth. Kenneth. Yeah, I love him and Jack's inter him and um, Alec Baldwin together. Dude, Alec Baldwin is I don't know you know. Say what you will about him nowadays. I think he's a little gotten or something. Yeah. He gets a little crazy nowadays. Okay. And he shot that. He shot that guy. He's way. I don't he's think he shot him today. on purpose, right? No, but that's a crazy thing to happen, right? Like, yeah. 
Is he in politics too? I haven't heard that. Yeah, he's I don't super, think I read a lot of Alec Baldwin stuff. He's super political, and he's that. Uh, I don't know. He just seems like a little unhinged, I suppose. And uh, whatever, artists are, and brilliant people are, and maybe that's what makes him so good. But he's hilarious sure. on that show. I really uh, enjoy him. I kind of. He gets a pass forever for me because I love Jack Donaghy. He's got that, and he's got the dry, sarcastic one-liners. Oh, he's like your hero. It's true. I wish I could be, but it's like only works. I've learned later in life it only works in a show. And then I was gonna watch with Teddy tonight, Princess Bride, but he we played video games instead. But there was a That's... thing. This is a good Princess Bride story because Emma always gets pissed when I talk to her about it. During COVID, they didn't go to recess because they didn't want, like at the beginning, right? They didn't want everybody interacting, the different classes, because they wanted to separate them. So they stayed in their room and they watched movies. And they'd watch a bunch. And I heard they watched Paul Blart Mall Cop. And I was so mad. And then Emma... Because it's a terrible movie. Oh, okay. And then Emma said, we're getting to request movies. I said, tell them you want to watch Princess Bride. It's a like, great movie. So she puts that in. And the teacher says, we can't watch that. It's too violent. Okay. So they shut down Princess Bride, but let them watch Paul Mar- This is the only time I've ever almost called the school <laughs> to complain. You nerd. Uh, I mean, is there I a lot never... of violence in Paul Bart Malal? Or... <laughs> yeah, there's or like shootout it... at the end because he's like the mall cop. It gets the mall gets taken over, and it's a, just a bad movie. Yeah, I like um, Princess Bride's one of those ones that I used to. I don't know if I owned it, but I feel like I used to watch it when I stayed home from school. Maybe I just. Well, that's what it. it's about too. Yeah, the kids home from school sick. So maybe I didn't used to do that. Maybe I stole that story <laughs> from them. <laughs> I think I might have made that up. <laughs> did you think, what was the guy's name? I think uh, I did do that once, though. There was some, oh, you know what it was? Wow. Were you like Ferris uh, Breakfast Bueller? Club. Breakfast did you, Club. Do you tell all your stories through, through a movie? Once well, I think friend, I was Me and my sick. friend Cameron stayed home from school <laughs> one day, and my dad, my dad's Ferrari was in the garage, and I was like, why don't we go to a Chicago Cubs game? Cameron's like, because we live in Connecticut, dickhead. We're in Cheshire. I, uh, no, it was Breakfast Club. I watched Breakfast Club like six times in one day once because I stayed home from school and my mom, um, shout out to mom, rented it for me from Cheshire Video. Shout out to Cheshire Video. That's a I apologize story. for stealing that story. Um, yeah, I remember wh- when you were in detention and whoever you, ran, wrote, uh, you ran away from Princess that guy who's a dick. Yeah, and that cool song was playing in the background. Oh, uh, what was that song? Don't you forget no. about well, that's me. the end of the movie. When they're running through the halls, what song dun, was playing? Dun, dun. Running right, right with in the and devil. Tell us. No, I love that song. Yeah, it's a, it's like an '80s song. What song is it? I'm gonna look it up. You right know. Fire in the Twilight? By Wang Chung? Play it. Yeah. yeah. Look at the plays. It's what, the second lot? most play on the... Oh, no, it's the third most play on the soundtrack. $858 million for her. Don't you forget about me. This is the third one. What else did Wang Chung sing? Everybody Wang Chung tonight. Dance All Days? That's the first Dance one. Dance All here. Days, love. Oh, yeah, I know this one. And we're cool. Home. Hey. And we dance all day. Oh, okay. When I'm you. I like this song. Everyone with. Yeah, Wang Chung ruled. What this one, what's this one? <clears throat> what's this one? Space junk? We went to space and I showed everyone my penis. Space junk, everybody. That song's terrible. Yeah, it has four million more listens. Right at the end, though, it sounded like a James Bond song. 
from Space Wang Chung 97. They re recorded Everyone Had Fun Tonight. Duh. And they have Space Junk on here twice. Mm hmm. One's, yeah, well, that one's the 97 <laughs> remaster. Remaster. It's such a stupid thing. So, yeah, that's when my junk was a little older in Space Junk 97. <laughs> Are you talking about your dick? You making yourself laugh with a dick joke? Well, I mean, what else could space junk be about? Uh, you know, um, like when they send astronauts to the moon, they probably don't always clean up after themselves as much as they should. There is a lot so of space junk, yeah. There's probably some sh floating around out there. And the guys from Wang Chung, like, look, we have two good songs that people have heard of. <laughs> Nobody's written a song about all that junk out in outer space. We should raise awareness for all that junk that's out in outer space. This might catch on. This could be like a, a We Are the World type of like thing Like NASA for us. will play it? Yeah. We need to we'll think clean about... clean up the moon type of... Yeah, like let's clean up the moon. Maybe all the people on Earth will hold hands together. Yeah, there's a lot of people junk. starving in this there's world. There's a lot of space junk out there. There's people starving. People dying of diseases. I was in space the, just the other day and I saw just a refrigerator sitting on the side of Saturn. One of the biggest problems is litter in space. That's why we wrote this song, Space Junk, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, this is called Space Junk. <laughs> <laughs> we want everybody to have fun tonight. <laughs> space Junk. <laughs> yeah. What about the one from, what about the one from Chung, Breakfast Club? People like that one. You want the two Fuck songs, that. that's it. Dance Hall Days, maybe. We only play Wang Chung from the 90s. I think Breakfast Club song is my favorite Wang Chung song. I like it better than I... I'd say Everybody Have Fun Tonight is my least favorite of those three. Yeah, I like dance. Like, it was dumb. Like I said, the name of the band in the song is... It's like Bad Company. That song is terrible. Bad Company. I don't really like... Well, no, I... You know, I kind of like... Um, Johnny Was a School. I like that song. I heard. do, too. But I like other people's versions of it better than I like their... Who else like, wrote a version of it? I think it's been covered a lot. Really? Yeah. I uh, didn't know that. Please don't Google it, because I don't know if I'm making a claim that's true or false. But I know What's I've heard other bands... the name of the song? Shooting Star? Don't you know that you are a shooting star? I guess I like their version, but I just I know I've heard... I don't think it's ver called Shooting Star, though. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's it. Who covered Shooting Star? Puddle of Mud? That must be the one you like. I love that version. <laughs> Aren't they a Christian rock band? No, they had one good song. Was it Tesla? It Puddle or Mur Golden Smog? Tesla, Ice I like the band. You know, Tesla is a band from like the 80s that I don't think anybody gives a shit about, but I kind of like them. They covered Shooting Star in 2006. <laughs> One night I went to Michelle's parents for dinner early on in our relationship and driving home, Michelle's mom always served like super healthy stuff. And driving home, I was like, I got it, I got it. And I had to go so bad that I just pulled over and it in somebody's yard. I and did. it exploded out of my butt. <laughs> okay, where were you? In your, in your neighborhood? No. I was like halfway home. So just in some weird area that you yeah, didn't I just know. Yeah, I was like, if I don't do it right now, I'm going to poop my pants. <laughs> and it exploded out of my ass. Any lights on in the neighborhood? Yeah. Yep. So pretty easily could have been seen, sure. sort of. Some car drove. I mean, I drove into a side road. It was a main road. I drove the side road, but it was like right. I drove a side road for two minutes and then pulled over and I was like, I'm just here i can't i can't hold this anymore and it, i felt you know afterwards i felt probably better than i ever have in my life mm -hmm. so i'm gonna ask you a question that you asked me when i told a similar story that made okay. me really uncomfortable this is what great. did you wipe what did you wipe with i didn't yeah that's the worst the worst part about being in weird places is like it's such a weird place that there's not toilet paper anywhere around yeah i just and pulled up my pants toilet paper with drove that's home what, Took a shower. Why and don't then... we start carrying toilet paper in our cars? That would we'll be, be like smart. Geniuses. If you maybe put a toilet paper roll in your car, like a like a little thing. That's what I mean, not like five swabs of it or something. 
No, but like a whole dispenser. Like you just have it in there. Oh, like a mounted toilet paper yeah. dispenser? Yeah. Well, then you're going to look a little weird. The guy's like, why do you have that in your car? Man, what do you have? I mean, you have, you have a family. It's a little more acceptable. Just a single guy <laughs> driving around in a pickup truck. Like you think a minivan with a toilet paper toilet disposal? Paper in his car? Yeah, well, that'd be I've, great. I think it would make sense. But minivans are great, so maybe you just want to get a minivan. Me? Yeah, now because you get your pants a lot, you just get a minivan. So I'm going to be a single guy driving a minivan? Yeah, with, with a toilet a paper dispenser in it. Toilet paper dispenser and a mattress so. in the back of the minivan. You know Mark, the guy that wears um, <laughs> overalls and a luchador mask, drives a minivan, has toilet paper thing now. You don't know him? Good guy. He's not as weird as all those things that I just said would indicate. That is a great rundown. <laughs> yeah, he's got the luchador mask, toilet paper dispenser. Shits his pants once in a while. He owns that little mailroom store that's in that <laughs> plaza over there. <laughs> He'll mail shit oh, whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. He's right. a great guy. Mm-hmm. Doesn't like the show's face, wears weird masks. Everybody likes him. His friend? Hard <laughs> to talk to. His friend has none of, <laughs> friend, none of those weird things, but just hard to talk to. This has been a, it's been a tremendous evening. Yeah, you guys ready for two and a half hours we've been doing this conversation? I just had a good time. I don't know how much you'll get out of it, but we really did 15 minutes of Sisk stories in two and a half hours, so you got you got your wish. You got a lot of just us chat. This was like the old days. Yeah, I do kind of like this. Where I'd call you at like 2 a.m. and we'd just talk for like two hours. Yeah. You'd be like, hey, did I tell you this story about a guy named... Paul Anderson that I read recently? <laughs> no, not that far. <laughs> but just weird. So I'd be like, did you ever think about this? Mm-hmm. Although although now some of the stuff I tell you, you're like, you've told me that 18 times because you don't have What was say. the one that... Man. No, I've, been, like, I've been God. doing lately. I've just been asking people out to lunch. You said last time that you were saying yes to people. Yeah. Excuse me, a lot. It's been great. Whenever someone's like, do this, I'm like, yes. Like, Teddy tonight was like, do you want to play Super Smash Bros? I'm like, yes. Seems like Let's a lot do- of your interactions is Teddy. Do you, get a, do you get a fair amount of adult interaction, too? With other adults? That's what I mean by adult interaction. Yeah. Uh, yes, but not, I mean, you, when you have children, it's harder. But I do. That's what I mean. I'm just like, this week, I asked some people, I'm like... Who wants to go to lunch? Next week, I just emailed three people I'd like to eat lunch with. Two of them said yes. It was great. Did you all go together? No, it's for next week. Are you going with to one lunch date with two people or two no, lunch dates? No, different with... ones. Oh. One on oh. one. Wow, nice. The other friend, actually, the other friend who did, it's this guy from work I really like. He's been on a podcast, one that's much more popular than ours. So he, um, and I think it's okay to say this because he was on the podcast talking about it, um, had a like an alcohol, drug alcohol problem, went to rehab, it's clean now, um, told the story to the school as well. Great guy, like super positive, <clears throat> like the kind of people, I'm sure you know people like this, like you just hang out with them and you're like, these are the kind of people I need to hang out with. Like they're just like super positive about life. In like a in a genuine way, yeah. That's just like tremendous. Sounds terrible. Do you think we could uh, get him to drink? Could I give him some of this tequila? No, he will not. Do He's that. pretty I, staunch I, about that. And I wouldn't want to do that because that's. Yeah, but I don't know him. I want to. Yeah. What if I just sent a bottle? I think I think that you're gonna you're ruining the whole thing that I'm talking about. Don't do it. Okay. So he his two friends started a podcast about. Oh rehab. Yeah. Yeah, you did tell me about this. And they talked about their crazy stories at first. And it was fine. I think it was like a little bit popular. But then they just started talking about their rehab and going through it. And then tons of people started listening to it. And you can listen to all of it online. Eventually, one of the guys relapsed and died. Hmm. So the episode that my friend was on was when they were at his funeral and they just invited all the people that had been in like rehab with him on the podcast. It sounds a little more heavy hearted than ours. Yes. Yeah, I hope we don't get to that, that spot where one of us dies in and... rehab stories. 
Yeah. You, know, you want to just improv a rehab story? Nice. That's <laughs> where so we're we're, hey, I mean, uh, we're, we're probably name's... like we're fair at rehab. But my name's my name's Scottsdale Yuma. Or, I'm sorry, Scottsdale Y. Sorry, and I am an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. I wanted to actually ask you. Know, him, you're supposed to say, "Hi, Scottsdale Y." Oh, sorry. We're really doing this. Yeah, I thought so, right? No, but I but I, what I wanted to ask him. And I think I'm going to ask him this, and then I'll tell you about it on the show. Was, um, like, so drinking, obviously, right? Drinking drugs, you got, like, a tremendous high. It's fun. That's why you do it. And then there's the downfalls of it, right? Of course, if you do too much. Like right now? Um, the, be driving home ha- tonight after drinking <laughs> Yeah, that's probably not a good half idea. Half a bottle of tequila? Call an Uber. Okay. And okay. then, but... Like, how do you fill that void after? That's what I wanted to ask him. Um, because you have eating. that hard time with everything. Like, right as you get older, when you were young, you had this, like, void of stuff young, that you could fill. And now you're old. Making love was just for fun. <laughs> and stuff gets harder. And there's Stay just, like, time. filling that void. All by myself. It's yeah, harder, well, to f- harder to fill. I just want to ask him, like, how have you done? I don't. Did it's he kind of heavy. Is he for, fat? It's kind of he- no. Is fit. he really in shape? Yes. So maybe he. You Works usually out. just yeah. You just substitute one addiction for. Everybody's addicted to something. Sure. So if you I'm just di- channel I don't know that what I'm addicted to. Do. Love. <laughs> like that Robert Palmer song. Robert Palmer wrote that about me, actually. But I like the cover version that um, Queensryche did a little bit. Puddle of Mud did. <laughs> Puddle of Mud. Dude, let's not even... Terrible... Let's, just, let's record for, like, hours tonight, and I won't even edit it. We'll just put it out. <laughs> conversation. Four straight hours of us talking. Puddle of Mud has one good song, though. They have a song that we all know. Can but you I can't name think it? of what it is. Uh, I think I it's one of those songs that's about like hating your partner. They also did a cover of a Pink Floyd song. I feel like. Okay, their first song is called Control. No, that's not it. She hates me. She f- hates that's me. That's them. Yeah. No, no, no. I thought that was a one. Um. So they're not a Christian rock band because he's worth. Song. Yeah, that was in a played in a hardware store at one point. Thought this was Ugly Kid Joe. No, that's I hate everything about you. Uh. I was thinking that the other day. I'd like to become more. Me? I think I need this, and you would probably tell me this because you like to tell me what I should do. But I think I should become more content. Like it'd be with, a good thing. with what you've got. Yeah. So I think it, I think it would be good. Like just I've, content I, with like I have friends. I have people who like me. I have a nice life. I have children that are great. I have a wife who loves me. I have a great house. I have a good job. So I should just be like, I should learn, I need to learn to become content instead of, and I don't think I'm always, but like sometimes I get, maybe like jealous isn't the word, but that thing where I like want to be something different and I think it's, it's dumb. I agree with you that that would, you know, I don't know if that's just a switch you can turn on in your head or not, but I think that's. All right. So I, I talk too much about paddle boarding and I talk too much about shooting pool. But I think shooting pool is a good metaphor for a lot of things in life. And one of the things about shooting pool is that if you watch people that are really good with pool, they can do things that you can't do when you go out and play on the table that's in your local yes. bar. Because you don't have the same equipment that they have. They don't, even if you were amazing, you just can't do it. So, What equipment do you need? Like a, you know, like a good stick and a table that's got real tight felt and balls like your that sticks are balanced. A little older, or like, maybe shriveled I just up. Use, yeah, yeah. I'm 47 years old. My <laughs> stick, sometimes my stick just doesn't, you know, act the same way it did it 25 years same ago. Things. It's, sometimes right. it doesn't even respond. No, no. I'm sorry. I've been drinking tequila all night. My pool <laughs> stick's just not nearly as good as it was three hours ago. 
We could do it tomorrow, though. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, the, um... So I've just... I, as I've learned the game over my life and stuff... Sure. You've played a lot of pool. I've played a lot of pool, and I've learned that you just have to sort of... Rather than try to do things... Excuse me, that you really can't do, given the equipment that you have and the the shriveled old pool stick that's, you know, you were just, you were born with it. What am I sure. supposed to do? Yeah. Uh, balls that are weighted poorly, table that doesn't have tight felt. Just take what the table gives you, do your best, and if you're like, uh, you know, if you're any good, you'll have fun. You'll win a lot you'll of games. Get in, you'll, you'll get you'll it win in a the few. hole once in a while. You'll lose a few games. You know, someone will make fun of your wimpy little crooked pool stick. and Yeah. But for the most part, then you just take what the world gives you, enjoy it, do what you will with it, and yeah, I, I think a lot of people kind of. I mean, that's a yeah. thing. There's, There's you know. some people who should be pissed. Their lives suck. I'm not like one of the them. little like the little kids on the Shriners commercials. I'm always yes. surprised. I'm like, how the or the guy in the so Iron happy? Lung. Well, the Iron Lung would be cool. Like I said, haven't you guys just pushed me I around? Don't know if that's cool. I think it'd be cool for us to do it with you with one night. But like so first of all, I get you guys to push me around, and if we get into a gunfight, I have an iron lung protect. Like, <laughs> is iron no one bulletproof? Can, the only thing that exposes my head, and nobody but shoots glass, from the head. But there's glass too. Oh, there is. I thought it was yeah. all iron. No, there's some window, like because you could, if you're naked. Do you think could we could substitute plexiglass, like a bulletproof plexiglass for <laughs> the? You're like, I have a bullet, <laughs> but they could shoot you in the head. I don't know why I want to be a gangster in a uh, <laughs> you're in an, an iron, iron lung. lung. <laughs> That's our new our new uh, drama on NBC. Iron lung gangster. Gangster in the iron lung. I mean, it would be kind of creepy if they just told you you were dying. Yeah, I agree though. I I mean, I I think we agree with each other. We're agreeing right yeah. now, which is great. I don't know. Yeah, I, think it's I, just I, like I know that I could have done more with my life, and I know that I could have done less with my life, and uh, I don't know. I'm happy with the little simple thing that I've got going on, and I've got plenty of things that could bring me down. I've got things that could bring me up, and you just sort of let, um, I don't know. Do you focus on it so much that it like becomes problematic? Do you get like depressed about it? Do you get... I think I've gotten there, and I'm moving away from it. Yeah. I've gotten better at, like, brushing off. Because I think there are people who try to bring you down, like, like in a um, mean way. Like Ronnie? This guy Ronnie that I know? R Ronnie. F*** Ronnie. Yeah. But I, like, I'm trying to, like, move past that and not let it, like... Because it would consume me, make me angry. I think a lot of it comes back to my mother was, the like, the nicest woman ever but people like steamrolled her and like took advantage of her like at her job and her life yeah. and that always made me like angry that she got taken advantage of so yeah. i think i've overcompensated for that like you often overcompensate for things you either like I do exactly like your pants are toilet paper around in my car now because I... yes <laughs> you shit your pants a couple times and i put a whole I... toilet I put a porcelain <laughs> toilet in the bed of my truck. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. yeah. So you overcompensate. So that was my thing. Like, I get mad when I feel like people are taking advantage. But I'm just like, now I'm just going to be like, whatever. <laughs> Should we finish up our episode? <laughs> I don't know. We're three hours and 20 minutes. This is crazy. Ted's going to wake up at some point right, yeah. in the morning and, like, right. jump on my face. Close it up. Lock it down. What do we say? Shut it down? No. Wait, <laughs> wrap I it always up? Write, wrap it up. I always write the exact same thing in, that, in our last segment. Wrap it up. If I think one hour and... What's half of three minutes and 21 seconds? One hour and 40 three minutes? Three minutes and 21 seconds. <laughs> I can't... Dude, I am... Is that a half a bottle? Have I tried to yeah, get half is. a bottle of tequila? Yeah, you gotta tonight? be careful, man. I'm only I'm driving like Yeah, I know. Should I leave this part out? Should I not yes. publish this part? Mom. No. I'm not driving home. I'm calling an Uber. I think you can cut it out. I know for a fact that you don't have Uber from on your the phone. three hours and twenty minutes, I think you can cut it out. Alright. Produced by Phoenix Tucson. Are you gonna fact check? Fact checked by Carol Burnett. <laughs> theme song by Mega Yellox. 
Social media by Cousin Paul. I feel like there were a lot of coincidences in this episode. You, like, you brought, brought up Carol Burnett, and I, I swear to God, I think it was last night I was watching that. It was either last night or the night before. Magnum P.I.? I watched an episode of Magnum P.I. with Carol oh. Burnett in it. And then you had a wet dream about Carol Burnett. That was crazy. <laughs> A.J. Burnett. <laughs> he had such a good fastball. He was a star for like three years. Yeah. The Mets traded him to the Marlins. He was a Mets guy. That's what he got good, right? The yep. Marlins? Because the Mets traded him for Piazza. Oh, that's how Piazza ended up there? Yeah. Little fact for you guys. Carol Burnett's son, A.J. Burnett, was <laughs> traded for Mike Piazza. All century, all century son. catcher. Drew him away from... Oh, no, he wasn't the Mets to start with. He was a Dodger forever. Dodger went to the Marlins and to the Mets. I forgot he was a Marlin. Yeah, Carol Burnett's son. If you think that story was interesting, send us an email to the magroom at hotmail.com or a letter or a fax. Mark got my... some masks. You got some masks, right? Yeah. Oh, and I. So we're going to have to do our contest where you rate the masks at some point. Yeah, and so the issue. Why I'm wearing El Escorpion we didn't wear the new mask. mask. Tonight. Yeah, I know, because I got here. I told Jared I was going to be late. So I was running in here late, coming in hot. And the masks that I was sent don't have masks. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they have, don't have. I don't. I feel weird saying mouth holes. Is there a. <laughs> is there a politically correct term for mouth holes on a mask? Mm. It makes it's very. It sounds dirty, but it's not. I just want to be able to speak out of my mask. Glory so, I think you want to call them Thank you holes. to whoever sent me the baby, the angry baby mask. And no, don't the, tell me yet. Oh, the X uh, blank mask and the other blank mask. I just didn't get a chance to do them tonight because I came in here too late, and I have to cut. I have to cut mouth holes in them Can't for uh, for next episode. So you got to. So that's the first two entries in the mask contest. Thank you very much for uh, it's, it. Was came Amazon, and I don't know who sent them, but because you said you were going to send a prize to the winner, I did say yep. that. He did. Did I say what the prize was going to be? You said there was a list of things like a bottle of Jack Daniel. There was like a oh, lot of, and a, or a copy of The Panther by um, yep. Yeah, <laughs> there was a bunch of different. And I just noticed prizes. that's there, still there today. All right. Right. So, so same guy who sent me the masks, write in and tell me what kind of prize you want from... Oh, he just gets a prize. You're not going to pick the best one. Everybody gets a prize. Um, who sends in a mask? Uh, what? He? Uh, <laughs> he's the only one who sent it. Do, do I know, I but not, I didn't know if we were going to leave it open a little bit. We, now we got oh, one entry. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you're, you're gonna saying... You're going to pick the best one. Okay. Or you're going to rank them and then send a couple prizes out based on the ranking. Right. So this uh, is the first entry. This might be the only entry. Okay, well, entry. thank you for the first entry. I'm yes. not going to send you a prize right away because I don't know <laughs> if that's the best one. You might win a prize. Right. Most likely because who knows what other Probably, mask we'll get. yeah. So, but, okay. And if you're going to send in a mask... Just try to remember, yeah. please, if you could, try to make it so that it has a mouth. Yeah. Or, or an orifice. Joe should send you a Bob Newhart mask. That would be great. Oh, uh, yeah. I feel like I'm going to cut that story from last week. I'd like to thank Joe for uh, our favorite listener, Joe, for sending in a Bob Newhart um, uh, postcard. Uh, <laughs> okay. So you're going to keep it in this week, the 14-hour well, right, so well, episode? Remember, remember last week I mentioned it when we were doing the audio and I forgot to... This show sucks dick. I, I'm sorry, everybody, but I forgot to hit the I hit the, I didn't hit the record button last week, and I wanted to thank Joe for sending in a postcard because it really is a nice gesture. He went through the process of buying a postcard, from writing out a letter, putting a stamp on it. Yeah, from the Newhart uh, mo, uh, Bed and Breakfast, the Wayberry Inn, in autographed by Bob Newhart. Yeah, it was a yeah. I love the show Newhart. We got a postcard from the show. When we were talking about it, I had forgotten to hit the record button. Yeah, that was so crazy. So I apologize on behalf of me and my record button. 
I would like to say I'm sorry that I, I didn't hit it. I don't know if you blame the button. Well, shouldn't it have? It, sh- it should have reminded me that it needed to be hit. I don't. I don't sit back here very often. We even did the countdown, which was weird. Well, that is, isn't it crazy that we did the countdown? And I just ignored the fact that I was. Putting, <laughs> the whole point we do it is for me to hit the button. It just sounds how relaxed you were. Yeah. All right. Well, Joe, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Hashtag. Lots of hashtags this week. Put down your phone. Talk to people just like don't, this today. Don't murder your wife. Don't kill your wife, please. We have to remind you that. <laughs> Mask life. Mark's still raising money for masks for the camera shy. Right. To raise money for that. Spider dreams are real. Sure. Glen sure. Allen Hill. Two out of seven people suffer from spider dreams. Such vivid spider dreams that they'll, they'll injure themselves in the middle of the yeah. night. Yeah, and you got to save them for that. Yeah. And then the last one, when you listen to this, drink with the show. We drank today, drink with the show. Unless you're not a drinker, you don't have to drink if you're like quit drinking or you don't drink. But if you are a drinker, have some drinks while you listen to this episode. You'll you'll like it better. Drink tequila for three hours and 31 minutes and see how you (laughs) feel at the end of it. Tequila scenario. And if you've gotten divorced and love's got you down and you um, you turn to drinking tequila all the time and you really want to clean yourself up but you can't, it doesn't feel right. I, feel, I, I went in the wrong direction. <laughs> You're just like, We're a little just more like, lighthearted. I'm um, just like bummed out now. I know. And I didn't feel that way up until the If you invited Carol Burnett to your party... Years. But she didn't if watching, come. If you're watching you Magnum PI and you see a cameo <laughs> from someone that you're not sure, she had red hair, and I guess she Carol Burnett was not a pretty woman. No. But she. Um, Super funny. Yeah. Are we sure of that? Okay. <laughs> this is not. This is not ending great. If you like tequila, <laughs> I'm sure she's funny. I just don't think she's my sense of humor. I, sure, she that's doesn't, fair. I like mean. I like mean people. But people, people. like her. I just. I. I she's she famous. She likes a, a non mean sense of humor. I like a mean sense of humor. Sure. I think it's funny to be mean to people. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. We're more in that camp. I think it's funny to be mean to people. It's not funny to make just to like weird to. faces at people or some what? people. Most people love that. The weird Carol faces. Burnett had a really top show, and we have a mediocre podcast. So, so she's winning or we're winning. So stick so with the mag. Everything else <laughs> <laughs> will be cream cheese. It's cream cheese. F- you, Carol Burnett. F- you. F- who? Carol Burnett. Really? I thought that was a good way to end the episode. All right. Well, <laughs> Meow. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, my groom is good. My groom is good. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, my groom is good. My groom is good. The my groom's good. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, my groom is good. My groom.